Hello and welcome to another Anime Law and Theory video. I'm Shergok, your host, and today we are going to take a closer look at the world of solo leveling and why it is so horrible. But before we're going to take a closer look, let me quickly thank my Patreons for supporting this channel and say my thanks to all users of the YouTube Thanks function for making one-time donations. Also, there are no spoilers for the second episode of solo leveling here. So if you have seen episode 1 of the first season, this video is free of spoilers. And with that said, let's take a look at the topic at hand. The world of solo leveling is terrible, and this is not an exaggeration. It's simply a fact due to the monsters that appeared in our world 10 years ago, posing an existential threat to the survival of the entire human race. These monsters are akin to the Flexons from Invincible or the demons from Warhammer 40k, representing a genuine and global threat to us. And one might think that giant ants shouldn't really be a problem, considering that modern humans have all sorts of long-ranged weapons, from rifles, good old flamethrowers, grenades and landmines, to self-propelled artillery systems and fighter jets, and if necessary, their nuclear fission and nuclear fusion weapons capable of eliminating entire cities. However, the monsters are not purely biological creatures, but inherently magical in nature, hence why normal weapons don't have the desired effect on them. And solo leveling's opening beautifully demonstrates that regular firearms and projectiles are entirely ineffective. And this, by the way, posed an enormous source of frustration for the military, seeing how monsters attack one's own people, and then realizing that your weapons are essentially useless against the true greatest enemy of your kind. And only really good for eliminating other humans, it's... it leaves a bad aftertaste. And with that said, we now know why the monsters in solo leveling are an actual threat. And solo leveling is brilliant in terms of world building in this regard, without even diverting too much time from the actual story. It has revealed, in just a few sentences, why monsters are a threat and why the military is powerless to stop them. And in general, most explanations and most lore is held in the background, with the focus tightly on the high-intensity action. But nonetheless, thanks to all of these explanations, we now have a firm grasp on why the world of solo leveling is, how it is, and how all of this makes sense. And of course, where there is darkness, there is also light. Not only have monsters appeared in the world, but there are also humans who can defeat them. Blessed with a different, but nonetheless significant amount of power, they can now heal people, cast mighty spells, or simply hit so hard that a gigantic ant monster is thrown dozens of meters through the air. However, monsters are not usually found just roaming in the wild, they reside in so-called dungeons. Under certain conditions, they can escape, but the exact workings of this are not yet explained in detail in the anime, so I will delve into it another time. But in this curse of monsters lies yet another blessing. While monsters are indeed very dangerous, and while the anime has actually shown this, their magical essence, along with other mana crystals, can be looted. It basically just works like in an average video game. And therefore, Although these monsters pose a danger to humanity as a whole, they have become somewhat beneficial. And the hunters who, well, hunt monsters, have also organized themselves into guilds over the last 10 years, since the portals have appeared in our own world. After assessing their strength, they are then assigned ranks. And these ranks range from the lowest and weakest E rank, and are then ascending to D, C, B and A with the strongest hunters receiving the S rank. And it was also shown that these hunters are not simply thrown unprepared into the nearest dungeon. They are informed beforehand about what they are getting into, should they decide to become indeed hunters. So the world actually reacts to the monsters, and not just in the sense that hunters became a thing, but the whole bureaucracy, guilds, talent scouting and the process around them are also important and are illustrated briefly as well. 
which makes the world, at least in my opinion, feel a lot more alive and immersive than if this context had not been given. And those who choose the path of Hunter essentially become soldiers. Soldiers who are constantly fighting on the front lines against monsters and risking their very lives. And the anime quickly made it clear how suddenly one can die, pretty much without any warning. Meanwhile, the daily life of most people as in the normal population, or rather the civilian population, has not changed significantly. They have learned to live with the constant threat, much like South Korea had to learn to live with North Korea as its northern neighbor. Again, the first appearance of monsters was already a decade ago, so the world had time to adjust to this very danger. And finally, I want to explain some things about two very different power mechanics. The first is that the essence and the mana crystals are pure magical energy. Just as mana can power monsters or fuel spells, the energy in the loot dropped by monsters can be used to generate electrical power. Cleaner than coal, oil and gas, safer than the best nuclear power plant, and far more efficient than solar, wind and hydroelectrical power. In other words, this energy has the potential to elevate humanity to the next level as a civilization. And research in this direction is still in its infancy, which of course means that these crystals are incredibly valuable and even Sun Jin Wu, the famously weakest hunter in the entire world, can pay medical bills with the money he earns, sustain himself and send his younger sister to university. Again, this man, despite being at the literal bottom of hunters, can not only support himself but also two other persons in extraordinary circumstances. And if his family wasn't in such dire need of money, he still could live quite well from the money he earns. Despite the reward to danger is still very, very skewed towards danger. But aside from all of this, these crystals are also crucial for the hunters themselves, or rather their products are. While again, Sun Jin Wu sells these crystals because he needs the money to help his family, similar to Arshu from Overlord, and therefore also refrains from buying new equipment. But these essences and mana crystals can also be used to become a stronger hunter. Though not how you would expect, because becoming stronger in the world of solo leveling involves getting better swords, shields, scepters and other items. The better the equipment, the stronger one becomes, because unlike in animes like Overlord, where you can level up until you reach the 100th level, your own magical strength is fixed and cannot be further increased by any other means. In other words, strength is gained only through better equipment, somewhat like in Monster Hunter. Even though you haven't gained more power yourself, you slew monsters and have thus farmed better gear, allowing you now to take on bigger and more dangerous threats. And Sun Jin Wu would be significantly less often the weakest link, the Krillin of his group, if he had better equipment instead of just his dagger, which, as he himself admitted, contained hardly any mana. So in summary, portals to monster worlds emerge out of nothing ten years ago, threatening to annihilate the entirety of humanity, but the appearance of hunters kept them in check. But their threat is ever present. And now every nation lives in a constant state of war with these beasts always with the danger that the monsters might escape and cause great harm. Meanwhile, the magical awakening of humanity not only brings forth superhumans, but also the magical energy dormant in the monsters and in the mana crystals, could potentially solve the energy problems of humans and revolutionize the world. And in the midst of all of this, Sun Jin Wu, the weakest hunter in the world, the man who is a walking joke for his teammates has to put up with all of this because he desperately tries to earn money for his mother's treatment and his sister's studies after his father's death. So he's basically working as an underpowered child soldier. And he also came close to death a couple of times, almost dying of hunger 
or blood loss. And with that said, the video now ends. And now it's your turn. What are your thoughts about the video and about solo leveling? Let me know down in the comment section. Also next time, we will take another look at the world of Overlord again. And meanwhile, I say my special thanks to... Dash 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 Arda Daddy Arda ASK Bad Guy Ye Bad Burrito 316 Beza Ben C Brandon D Chrissy Crowley 0221 Sia Crystal Prime Dead Slime Death is Mercy Deathless Dragonlord Demon Xenomorph 1987 Devon Downen Ding Dong Dragonlord Placido Saxophone Duckwagon Dunkler Krieger Dystopia Dystopia the Second Enigmatic Unicorn Thirashivan Guy with that Hat Hector Marino Hoss Huster Jacob G Jana B Jason J Morris Chromius Kyle R Lee K. Long, Legendarius, Le Lush Ribetania with a Mustache, Lexus Fox, Lord Nishikian Rai, Lord Touch Me, Lothraiser, Merovec, Mr. Shoes, Mr. Tweaker, Michael R., Michael Y., Nope, oh hell no, Normal Toad, O'Kill, Overlord General Gasper, Paddy Pentum, Personage Primus 11 Rhinomir QNA Karakos P Shergox's Daddy Shadow Lightning Wolf Shrine Keeper Super Tier Magic Batista Bomb Supreme Cheese Staris Ted Texas Deer The Orc Warboss Rock at Smasher T.E. Wang The Shockeye Vegito 27 Venture Fanatic Wilhelm, Zinokai, and Zonagon. Thanks guys. Anyway, have a nice day, and I hope to see you all again soon on my next video.